Hi everyone, so in this video I'll talk about DNA markers. So let's get started. So in this I'll talk about three major types of DNA markers that are used. So firstly, what is a DNA marker? So DNA markers are used for genetic mapping of DNA sequences that are not genes but still display variability in the human population. So there are different types of DNA sequences that are available to us and that are mapped using genetic mapping where these markers are used. So talking about the first marker which is the SNPs which is the single nucleotide polymorphism. So these are available at positions in a genome where either of two different nucleotides can occur. So these are genetic markers you can say also. So DNA markers are also said as genetic markers which have certain physical fixed locations. So these have certain fixed locations in a DNA sequences and that is what we observe in SNPs. So SNPs are observed in that particular positions where we find two different nucleotides. So you can see here, so this is a sample or example of SNPs. So let's just consider this particular position. So you can see two different nucleotides at the same position. So this is marked by SNPs. So these are certain positions which are handled or commanded by these particular DNA markers. So this is one of these SNPs which handle these particular sequences which have two different nucleotides at the same position. So this, this was about SNPs. So talking about the second type of DNA marker which is RFLPs which is restriction fragment length polymorphism. So these are special types of SNPs. Ones which result in restriction site being changed. So these are result in restriction site being changed when digested with restriction endonuclease the loss of the site is revealed because the two fragments remained joined together. So in this case what happens is, so whenever we have a DNA sequences, DNA sequence, so these have certain restriction sites which are handled or which are, which are used for restriction endonuclease enzymes. So, the, uh, so let's say this is a particular DNA sequence. So these have certain restriction sites at these particular sequences which are used by restriction endonuclease enzymes. So these are certain uh, DNA markers that are present on the DNA sequences that remove those particular restriction site on the DNA sequences. So like this, in this case, we observe there are two different restriction sites. So due to the presence of these markers, RFLPs, these restriction sites are either changed to a different location or are removed permanently. So when we observe different restriction sites on different DNA sequences, so the restriction sites are either changed or to a different location or removed permanently. So this is the use of restriction fragment length polymorphism. So talking about the third and the most important DNA marker which is the short tandem repeats. So I'll talk about the short tandem repeats which is STRS. So these are also called microsatellites which are made up of short repetitive sequences of 1 to 30 nucleotides in length linked head to tail. So these are the examples of STRNs. So these are the examples of short tandem repeats. So you can see here these are repeated sequences. So these are repeated short stretch of sequence. So these are really short which can vary from 1 to 30 nucleotides which is mentioned here. So it can vary from 1 to 30 nucleotide and these have repeated sequences. So you can see C A C A C A which is continued with no differentiating. So these are short tandem repeats that are available. So the number of repeats present in particular STR varies usually between 5 to 20. So these repeats, so number of repeats which are present in these short tandem repeats can be found via electrophoresis. So which I will be explaining in the next point which is the number can be determined by carrying out a PCR using primers that anneal either side of the STR and then examining the size of the resulting product by agarose or poly polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. So this is a method which is used which is the general method which is uh, carried out using PCR. So whenever we want to amplify a gene using PCR, we check them via electrophoresis. So this is the same way. So that is the same logic we are using in this case as well for checking the number of repeats for short tandems. 
So for checking the number of repeats for STRs, we use PCR method. So whenever we run a PCR, after the product that we have received, when the PCR cycle is over, we check them over electrophoresis either by agarose gel electrophoresis or by polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. So this is a pictorial view for you. So you can see different uh, STRs that are available here such as A, B and C. So the number, so you can see the locations also vary from for all the three depending on the size and length of the STRs. So let's just keep this video till here. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.